Thank you all um, for staying until the very end to hear my pitch. I really appreciate, appreciate it. Um, I'm Ellie Kaplan. I'm the CEO of NeuroTrack Technologies. We have developed a technology that can diagnose Alzheimer's disease three to four years before symptoms appear. So this is obviously a very informed audience. Uh, Alzheimer's in the United States is becoming an epidemic. Today, there are more than 5.4 million people suffering from Alzheimer's. It's expected that in the next 40 years or so, another more than 15 million uh, people will have Alzheimer's disease. And by the year 2100, in our children's lifetime, we expect that number worldwide to be 300 million people. That's just an unbelievable number to begin to imagine. Today uh, on the market, there are a number of drugs that treat the symptoms of Alzheimer's disease, but there are zero drugs that prevent the disease from occurring or really adequately uh, de delay, uh, 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 delay the disease from, um, from occurring. And it's not for lack of trying. There are a number of really big uh, pharmaceutical companies, some of the world's largest pharmaceutical companies, that have tried repeatedly but sadly have failed over and over again. So, uh, you know, these drug companies continue to try, um, despite the cost of these failures north of a billion dollars per compound, in order to get to uh, the $10 billion market that these drugs repre represent, which is predicted to be the largest uh, drug market in the history of pharmaceutical companies. So why are the drug companies failing? Um, you know, we don't know if it's the drugs themselves because we can't get there. The drug trials for these types of drugs are flawed um, because they're, they're being run on people who are either too far gone, who have Alzheimer's, late stage al Alzheimer's, who, or who are not at risk at all. And that gets at the core of the way the disease operates. So Alzheimer's is, a, is what, you know, I consider a silent killer. It lives in the brain, destroying key memory centers for years before symptoms appear and doctors can diagnose it. And that's after years of irreparable damage has already taken place. So what would happen if we could diagnose Alzheimer's disease earlier? How would that change things? Well, we think the drug trials would work because the, tr the drugs would be tested on the right type of people, those who are pre-symptomatic but who we know will convert to Alzheimer's in the future. And that's what we've done. We've developed a technology that can diagnose Alzheimer's in that pre-symptomatic phase uh, and can help the drug companies um, really develop a blockbuster drug. Our technology was developed at Emory University by a team of neuroscientists and computer scientists there. And what it does is it, it studies the way people look at pictures, the way they experience new images. We capture that information, we analyze it using our um, patent pending algorithms and we can give it a prognosis, a diagnosis. And um, the results have just been mind-blowing. So we ran a five-year NIH-funded study, and we found that if you scored on the low end of our test, that there, with near certainty you would develop Alzheimer's disease in the next three to four years. And we found that if you scored on the high end of our test, you were not going to develop Alzheimer's in the next three or four years. So our strategy uh, going forward is to work with pharmaceutical companies um, to help them populate their clinical trials. And with 100 new trials a year and 20,000 patients, um, we think that that's going to be a very bi uh, interesting business opportunity for us. And then once that blockbuster drug is developed um, and hits the market uh, and people are less concerned about or less anxious about finding out that they may have this um, life-crushing disease, you know, we believe that we'll be very well positioned to become an annual screening tool for Alzheimer's uh, and dementia-related disorders. So we're an early-stage company um, that has made a lot of progress. We have our patents filed. We own the worldwide license to the technology and um, are working with a number of the country's biggest research uh, hospitals and institutions to, um, to pilot the technology, including Mass General, um, Johns Hopkins, and Emory's Alzheimer's Disease Research Center. And today, uh, excuse me, our team is myself. Um, I have a background uh, in the public and private sectors um, and a degree from Harvard Business School. Our chief medical officer is Colin McDonald. He's a practicing ne uh, neurologist um, in the Boston area and a serial entrepreneur. And then the, the below are our, uh, our scientific team. 
So as I mentioned, we're early stage, we're raising capital, we're looking for partners. Um, we are out trying to get our technology out there. We really believe that this technology has the potential to impact the way the disease is um, detected and treated, and we, we hope that we can be part of uh, finding a, cu a cure for, for Alzheimer's disease. So thank you. Right. Brief, but I wanted everyone to get to the end. <laughs> That was awesome. That was Good. fabulous in terms of timing and in terms of content. Um, quick question from me. So if this is so good, you only have to test somebody once to sort of find out if they're going to be at risk or not. What's your follow-on model? Do you just have to test them once, or are you going to be able to just say one and done, and then you have to find a new patient and get a new kind of business uh, like acquisition cost for each patient that you find? Yeah. No. So that. Um, the test itself is a very powerful diagnostic. So we have the ability to um, to not only test and see where you fall on this uh, on our scale and and what um, we think your future prognosis is, but it has the ability to um, to monitor your cognitive state, so improvement or decline. So over time, you know. Uh, I really see this as, and we talked about this a little bit earlier, as a mammogram for, uh, for Alzheimer's and dementia. You go in every year and you get tested and you find out where you are um, on the scale and what that means for uh, what you need in terms of your, your care. Great. And Ellie was just in the very hot Rock Health Group, which has been a really, I think, excellent sort of accelerator, um, which has given us some perspectives, but now I think is launching to the next. Uh, Tom. Um, so the question. the question was, how much does it cost to take the test? So we're not yet out in the consumer market. We are, um, we are part of these programs at some of the research hospitals. If you go in and take the test there, you won't be charged anything. Um, eventually, uh, you know, it's really hard to say. It, if, you, if you were to use the test as a screening tool and it were um, reimbursable, reimbursable, I think you know, the test would be somewhere in the 200 to $400 range. Um, that's compared to other diagnostics that are out there that are much more invasive and much more costly. Right, I think you had a question. Yeah, so Bill, on that, to, to actually administer the test, you have to be a, a neurologist, you have to be a specialist or an, anyone. Yeah, so, um, it's a beautiful test in, in that sense too. Oh, I'm sorry. The test is: Do you? Uh, the question is: Do you have to be a neurologist in order to administer the test? Um, and the answer is no. It's a computer-based test, um, and you know you don't. It's language agnostic. It's age agnostic. You could have had a stroke, and it's agnostic to um, to uh, any type of medical condition like that. Uh, the first, uh, our product 1.0 involves using an infrared eye tracking device that sits on top of a computer monitor. A patient comes in, sits in front of the computer, and is told to simply view the screen as though they're watching TV. Um, anyone could administer the test. You could take it in your living room if you wanted to, uh, it, using our second product that doesn't require the eye tracker. Um, very simple, takes about 30 minutes. Yeah. No, thank you. Okay, yeah. So this is probably a dumb question, but I get these emails every now and then that says, you know, look at the next three screens and you can see a figure in the screen. It's an indicator that you aren't going to have any problems with Alzheimer's or dementia or something like that. Is there any basis for that? Um, well, without knowing exactly who's sending the emails, it's hard for me to say, but I personally would be very wary of things like that that are sent over the email, especially from friends. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> oh, yeah, final question. What evidence do you have that catching it three years early is early enough? Uh, is that those studies are, the, the findings of those studies have been that so far, you know, those drugs have failed the people who are already down the, down the path. And they do say if you catch it earlier and start administering drugs, there's some hope. But look, is three to four years the magic number, or is that still to be real? You know, is that early enough to, to intervene? Yeah, so the question was um, is, uh, is that my time limit? <laughs> um, is three is catching the disease three years early early enough? And the answer is no. I mean, we know that Alzheimer's could be living um, in your brain for 
for 20, you know, 10 to 25 years, uh, they're seeing now. Um, that's as that's as early as we've been able to catch it. We think that we'll be able to catch it much uh, earlier. But you know, we ran a, a five-year study, and you know, if any, this is an NIH-funded study. For people who are familiar with those types of R01 studies, they take time. So you know, it's really a four-year study, and then there's the back end. We think that we'll be able to catch it much earlier. Being able to catch it, you know, the er, you know, even a year earlier. Uh, means that you'll be able to intervene and um, prevent the damage or slow the damage that wouldn't that would happen afterwards. Thanks, you guys.